Hey everybody, Mr. Hames here. Happy Halloween. And that's only part of the reason that we were dropping pumpkins from the roof as you just saw a moment ago. The other reason is because we wanted to teach you about gravity. Gravity is the reason that the pumpkins fall off the roof. Everybody knows that, but have you ever thought about what's really happening there? Let's start by defining gravity. So gravity is the force that attracts one object with mass to another object with mass. But what is mass? Mass is simply how much stuff an object has. So think of this example here for a minute. If I pull a volleyball, okay? A volleyball doesn't have much mass. Why? Because it's filled with air. Something that's more massive, would be this bocce ball, okay? It's heavier, it's solid through and through, it has more stuff inside. Obviously the volleyball is larger, it's bigger in volume, and the bocce ball is smaller, yet the bocce ball has more mass. So when we're talking about mass, we're talking about how much stuff is inside the object. And these pumpkins, just like every other type of matter, is made of stuff. So when we drop them off the roof, this happens. The other thing that's particularly interesting is objects with more mass have more gravity. This is evident in places like our solar system where the most massive object in our solar system is the sun at 99.9%. That's why all other objects orbit the sun. To demonstrate this, me and sixth grade teacher Mrs. Gudewitz, with the help of seventh grade teacher Mr. Ling ended up building a gravity well. Here's how Mrs. Gudewitz describes how gravity is literally what holds all our planets in orbit. Check it out. All right, everybody, as promised, here is our larger than life gravity wells. So as you know, there are two things that affect gravity and those are mass and distance. So mass, distance, all right? So we have here's our very large gravity well and I'm gonna place this mass in the middle. So as you can see, there's that indentation here and you can see this curvature. That curvature is the curve of space time. Like we said, mass affects gravitational force. So a smaller mass, like this marble, will be pulled towards the larger mass. And because of that curve, it's not gonna go in a straight line, it's gonna go in a curved way. So you can see the curvature of space-time. We also know that distance is another factor that affects space-time. So I have two masses of the same mass. So if I put them closer together, they are going to be drawn towards each other. But if I give them more space, the gravitational force is going to slow down just a little bit, but they're eventually going to come together anyways. How is a gravity well made? Well. She and I looked up the supplies online, watched a couple videos, took a trip to Menards, and assembled the thing with the help of Mr. Lang in one of our sixth grade common areas. When we did that, we took a big flexible sheet that was very stretchy, made out of the same material that spandex or Under Armour might be made out of, so it was able to stretch around the full circle of the PVC structure we created. If I took an object and threw it onto the gravity well surface, it would kind of pull that sheet down because gravity is working on the mass of the ball that I throw on there, and it's stretching the sheet downward. The less massive object, such as the marble, would always roll towards the more massive object, like the bocce ball. That's because the more massive object is pulling the sheet down more than the less massive object, and that caused the less massive balls to always roll towards the more massive balls. Now this kind of shows you a little bit of how the universe was first formed. The universe was formed by gravitational forces. When I take a bunch of marbles and I scatter them over the surface of the gravity well, if there's an object with more mass on the marbles, those marbles will eventually collect around the object with more mass. Well, this is how the universe formed in its early stages. Early on, there was more dust and particles flying around the universe, and over time, those particles clumped together as they made collisions. The larger they got over time, the more mass formed, and eventually you had larger structures in the solar system like planets 
and mainly stars. Now it's important to remember there's still pull between the objects. We can tell this with the moon. The moon is close enough to Earth that it's held close to Earth by Earth's gravity. But the moon's gravity also pulls back on Earth. The tides are an example of when the water goes in and out, it does that based upon where the moon is in relationship to Earth. <laughs> so this demonstration is actually what it was like returning from the moon. They did a slingshot around the moon so that they could take that gravitational force of the moon and use it to assist them to get back home. It takes a little practice. It's not as easy as it looks. Whoops. And a second. Oh my goodness. We got it, I think we got it, I think we got it. There you go, there's the figure eights. So it works. Okay, but what does this have to do with pumpkins? Well, number one, we just kind of like smashing things here in the science department. In fact, this has been a stressful year, so a lot of the science teachers took a Sharpie and wrote something that was frustrating them or uh, was stressing them out about this school year so that they could smash it. But the bigger reason is we wanted to show that the pumpkins fall due to gravity. Pumpkins will be destroyed by gravity! Those pumpkins are falling from the top of the school towards Earth's surface because the Earth we're standing on is way more massive than us and way more massive than certainly the pumpkins. So that's why the pumpkins fall. Two, one, drop! Oh! Hope you learned something new. Hope you think about gravity and its role in your life a little bit differently. And if anything, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween and have an opportunity to relieve a little bit of stress, just like our teachers did. Pumpkins! Have a great day, everybody.